Now we'll look at a couple other ways to differentiate the facade. This next approach is using what you might call an attractor. So what I'll do is bring a point into Rhino and the distance from that point to the center of each panel is going to determine the depth of the panel. So the way that we'll do that is I'm going to turn off the box morph. I'm going to turn the basic sub subdiv subdivided services back on. And I'll turn on the area command that we had used before that gave us all the center points. And what we want to do is bring a point into the Rhino space and set a relationship from this point to all those center points and get a series of measurements which we can then feed in as our height on a per panel basis. So what I'll do is go to parameters, point, set one point. And so now we've got this point and we've got these sets of points and we want to measure the distance between those. We can do that by going to vector point distance and making sure that we feed in the centers, not the area. And what that's going to do is give us a series of values. And we can look at these more closely if we go back to parameters and do another panel. Feed that in. And you can see that for all 76 panels, so it's 75 plus 0, that it's giving me a different value. And so it's similar to how the angle analysis work. So what we can do is we'll bring this down. And what I'll do is I'll disconnect the, the angle inputs that we were using before for the height. And instead, when I turn the box morph on, when I feed these values in, you'll get obviously a really dramatic expression of depth because it's taking these values and literally pulling that out by, say, 130 feet. So what we need to do is we need to tone it down a little bit. And I'll do that by going under the scalar command, scalar menu, and choosing an operator. Let's use multiply. So I'll feed these numbers in for A. And then for B, let's use a slider that this time it'll be floating point. And we'll set the values between, say, 0 and 1. So it's essentially giving me a percentage. So as I slide that down, you can see that I can take a more controlled approach to how deep these shading devices are. So what I'm going to do is just turn off those area center points and turn off the basic subdivided surface. And here I'm even going to change the values a little bit and say probably 1.5 is a max. Oh, excuse me, 0.15. So now I can slide between 0 and 0.15 and that's essentially taking a percentage or it's multiplying each of these numbers to tone it down so that it's more usable for what we're trying to achieve. And so what you can see is that this point, as it moves around the facade, you'll notice that it's changing because it's about the relationship, the distance relationship between this point and the center of each panel as it moves around, the facade is going to change. And it's not just happening in plan, it's also happening in elevation. So that you can see that 
as it moves up and down, those panels start to change because it is about an angular relationship from point to center point of panel. So these are this is a tool that you could use to vary your facade based on, say, interior program or any kind of environmental condition that might ultimately affect uh, a shading device or a level of transparency or whatever it might be. And that it's happening not just when we move the point around, but if we go back and we vary the basic curve, then you'll see that the facade updates again. So all of this is happening in a live associative fashion. So for the last approach that we'll show today, we'll use simply a random input. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll disconnect this number um, and go to the logic menu. And under sets, you'll see a random command. We'll bring that in. And this is looking for a number of inputs. It needs a domain. So we need to think about how much of an extrusion we want. We could say that we want from um, 1 to 5, because we're working in feet, or let's say 1 to 6. So I'll set one interval, start with 1, and then go to 6. Uh, number of random values. So here we can just set an integer. We can say, I don't know, 76 because there's 76 panels. Here it's asking for a seed. And then lastly, it's asking if we should limit to integers only. And it's set to false, so that's fine. So it's going to be essentially a floating point numeric output. And the seed, what that's going to allow us is to kind of alter what we get. So if we feed this in right now, you'll see that the depth of these elements is somewhat random. Um, and if we don't really like what we've got right now and we want to change it, what we can do is we can input a number for the seed and then we can kind of slide that and that's just going to keep changing the inputs. So it's just going to vary uh, the kind of random generator and give us a, a different output, which we can then start to make determinations based on you know, which is more successful. So that's a third approach that, that you can take. Um, and this is just the, the very beginning of starting to explore how Grasshopper can be used in a much more kind of detailed and nuanced way to deal with environmental or programmatic or any number of other conditions that you might face as a facade designer.